Welcome to Clear the Clutter. My name is Margaret, and this podcast is where I give you practical and spiritual advice to get your time back so you can finally spend it how you really want. Hello, hello. Welcome to today's episode. So today, episode number 54, is all going to be about money. So I'm continuing the theme of February's Money Month, and This week's episode is about how your money mentality affects like everything. And when I mean everything, I mean all the shit that you're conscious of and then all the shit you're not conscious of. So you're going to have tons of recommendations. I've got six journal prompts for you at the end of this episode. I have a special bonus that uh, I will talk about at the end of the episode as well. Um, There might even be a book recommendation in this one. So with that being said, if there's anything that I have talked about or I will talk about in this episode that gets your curiosity peaked or you want to learn more about, just go ahead and click on the show notes link and it'll take you to the show notes page and it'll have everything there. I'll have all the links, the books, the courses, the journal prompts, everything will be there for you. Um, so with that being said, let's get started. So how your money mentality affects everything. So today was a really good example of growth in a money mentality or a money mindset, whichever word you use. I like the mentality just because for me, it feels like it's a thing I'm constantly evolving on. But today was a really good example. I had some thoughts about another episode that I was going to produce tonight. And this one kind of came out of nowhere. And I'm like, oh, this is probably way more important to talk about than the other one. So let's do money mentality. So I was at work and I was talking with my boss. We were talking about some staffing things and how the department has grown a lot, a lot since I have taken over and what that looks like and all of those things. Um, and we normally have this type of conversation probably every six, eight months, maybe. And I have brought up something that my boss had brought up probably about six or eight, no, maybe about a year ago. Um, but he was saying that he was really wanting to take me off the sales floor. So even though I'm a parts manager, you don't, in the power sports industry, you don't traditionally see the parts manager actually selling. So quote unquote, being on the sales floor, AKA taking the phone calls, talking to customers, doing recommendations, following up on quotes. You really don't see the parts manager for the most part doing that unless it's a super small dealership. Majority of the time you see them in the background, fixing problems, doing returns, doing paperwork, doing inventory, doing spot checks, maybe supporting their sales staff. But majority of the time they actually take all of that and they put it on, you know, all the things that I normally do, they put it on their sales staff. And when my GM had brought that up to me last year, I bucked him hard. I was like, no fucking way in hell, bitch you high. Like I didn't actually say that. I thought it really, really hard. And he probably could hear me thinking it. But I was like, there's no way in God's green earth, which I probably ended up saying that, that I'm going to leave the sales floor. Right now in the parts department, I'm your best seller. I'm the one that's getting the 2000, 3000, sometimes five and $10,000 sales in one transaction. I know the most about this. I know the most about that. Yada, 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 yada. There's no way we can have me leave the floor without having massive repercussions. And on top of it, which I've been very open to, my paycheck is tied to how I perform. So there was, again, no way in God's green earth I was going to leave the freaking sales floor. Well, that was last year and probably the year before, including two. This year, how that relates to my money mindset and how things have changed is I have worked really, really, really hard. And I feel like I've done a pretty decent journey of chrono, categorizing, I don't know, capturing, let's use that word, capturing my journey on how my mindset has infected, uh, infected and affected my actions and how my actions are finally getting me not only the results that I want, but the results that I want in the time frame that I want. So how my money mindset play played into that scenario that I just gave you about, you know, taking me off the sales floor and having me do all this other administrative stuff versus where I'm at now, my mindset was, If I leave the sales floor, I won't make money. There's no one as good as me. There's no one as smart as me. There's no one as passionate as me. No one is going to want to do this job and really lean into it. Therefore, I can't leave because if I leave, I won't make money. I do not trust my department. I do not trust myself to hire good people. I do not trust my team to perform without me being there, standing over their shoulder and somewhat nagging. And I know when I say that, that 
you might first think like, oh my God, you've got control freak issues. And part of it was I totally did. The reason why I had control freak issues and I was on this kick of no one can do it as good as me. No one will perform as good as me. No one will step up as much as me. No one will enjoy this as much as me. Because I really do. I've given you plenty of examples throughout the years. I really do enjoy working as a parts manager. And that's why I really haven't decided to leave it full time and do either something else or do courses and all that full time. Like for me right now, it fulfills a need. But the reason why I was so control freaky around that was because of my money mindset. It had been one of the first jobs in quite a while that I felt I was finally getting paid according to the actions I produced. And so I had it tied up in my head that my money comes from the actions that I produce. And if I am not producing those actions, therefore money cannot make its way to me. So I had this fear-based mentality around money that it, and maybe it's a a very American thing because I have friends that are living outside of the United States and they have variations of this fear, but it's not like this particular fear of if I do not produce, I will not earn money. I do not deserve money. Money cannot show up to me. Money cannot be easy. Being a a person that has processes in place to receive money does not mean that I have worked hard enough or therefore am valuable enough to receive money. So all of these old mindsets and all of these old beliefs completely showed up in a very unexpected way when my boss was like, hey, let's take you off the sales floor. My mindset now, which is why I brought this up, was I had a conversation with him today and I was like, hey, I think it's pretty smart to take me off the sales floor. I feel like we finally have fixed the problems that I have. I feel like I don't have those hangups because I didn't use the word limiting belief, but I don't have those hangups around how this is going to affect my pay, blah, 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 blah. Here's all the positive things. I agree that you were right a year ago, but here are all the positive things that if we enact that quote unquote now, and I'm using air quotes, but like in the next couple of months, how that's going to help us grow and help us flourish and all of these things. And whether he recognizes it or not, the mindset behind behind why I was willing to have that conversation today was again, because of my mindset. I have listened and I've talked about it. I've listened to the course, um, becoming the wealthy, or I created the course, becoming a wealthy woman, but I listened to the Amanda Francis course about wealthy woman vibes. I listened to her drop the money struggle. I have completely immersed myself in what it looks like to elevate into overflow. So the last year, while the pandemic was going on, while things were crazy at work, while I felt like all of these things were up in the air and nothing felt consistent or, you know, normal. And I hate the word normal because everything's always changing. It's just a matter of if we recognize it, but still nothing really felt normal. So Instead of leaning into the fear, I was like, okay, well, what is the things that I can control? I can control myself. I can control my output. I can control my passion, my energy, my drive, and I can control my mindset. So just like I did years and years and years ago when I was in my early 20s, that I was going to focus on my mindset to have a better mindset in regards to um, being depressed and going to therapy and all of that, I was like, okay, I'm gonna focus on not just my mindset because that felt too big. I'm gonna focus specifically on my money mindset. I'm gonna focus on what does it look like to become a wealthy woman. I'm gonna focus on what does it look like to have none of, or at least, you know, bust through a bunch of these myths around earning and receiving. I'm gonna focus on all of these little unconscious hangups that I have that hold me back from earning more, that make me impulsive, make me do dumb decisions or make me so fearful that I never even reach for X, Y, and Z to begin with. So that has been the underlying groundwork of all of last year. And in regards to all of that, I feel like a lot of the fear, I feel like a lot of the anxiety, a lot of the mistrust around money and my beliefs around money and how I decide to show up and how money decides to show up for me have completely changed. So I've heard this phrase before forever and I never quite understood it. Like I understood it conceptually, like duh, I knew the words, what they meant, but the phrase you need to slow down to speed up never in a million years made sense to me. I'm like, how the fuck by slowing down, are you speeding up? What the hell does that even look like? Okay, cool. Maybe you're more efficient. Maybe you're more targeted. Maybe you're more focused, but to truly slow down to speed up. I thought that was an efficiency thing. I thought that by 
again, hacking this, DIYing this, being smart about this, that that would be the quote unquote slowing down. And then that way, the results that you wanted, the, the, out, the outcome you wanted, the ideas you wanted, that would help you speed up. And it's like, no. And I'll give you an example as to why that is really true around my money mindset in general. So the reason why was this past two weeks have been such a mishmash of limiting beliefs. It's not even funny. There have been limiting beliefs around how money gets to come into our family. There has been limiting beliefs. And these are all things that were challenged and then disproven, right? So limiting beliefs around how money has to come into our family, limiting beliefs around that there's never enough time to spend with family, limiting beliefs that things can't get better, limiting beliefs that things have to be a certain way, limiting beliefs of X, Y, and Z over and over and over again. And it always came back to money because all of these things were related to money. Well, last week was a crazy freaking week in our family. And then this weekend, we basically did not stop. We went to go see Ben's family in our old county that we used to live in, which is a couple hours away. So we call, we did what I call a turn and burn. We drove, well, let me rephrase. He drove while I slept, thank God, um, so that we could go see his family. And then we spent the whole day there, like the whole freaking day. And then he drove us back home. And then the following day after that, we had a agricultural um customer that we had to do work for and again he i was there with him but he was driving the whole freaking day and it was a lot of work it was a lot of energy it was a lot of uh, just go 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 but it showed me that okay there are again always multiple ways that money can come into your life and sometimes they're in expected ways sometimes they're in planned ways sometimes they're in completely unexpected ways and then the other thing too was how you show up for money can totally change so this customer that we ended up doing the work for um up until about Sunday looked it looked like it wasn't happening and I always used to hate when people would say especially when it comes to like courses and launches and stuff like that oh you must believe until the end because it always looks like it's not gonna happen and then it happens well for once I actually had the scenario come through because I'm like that just means you're not fucking trying hard enough or you're not clearing your marketing or whatever like I never actually understood it but this particular customer is a pretty big gig um, several thousand dollars worth of a gig. And we had gone out to the client site. We had done the prep work. We had had the conversations. I had sent over the quote and it was after I had sent over the last quote, it was just crickets. And I'm like, why is there fucking crickets? There was crickets for about a week. And then Sunday comes around and it, you know, the next day to do the job is like Monday. And I'm like, shit, I still haven't heard from him. And so Ben's freaking out in the background. Oh, we quoted too high. We did this, we did that. I'm like, you know what, Ben? Uh, uh, we quoted what was appropriate. We still saved the guy about $1,500 by having him choose us versus someone else because of how we decided to do the work and all of that. And I was like, you know what? If he decides not to do the job, that that's okay because I feel that we are comfortable. Like the amount of money that we are going to earn at least feels equivalent to the amount of time and energy we are expending for it. And so... I truly believed it was either this or something better. And I've told you all that before, like my mantra, my mindset, and that goes back to, again, my money mindset, especially in the last year, I've doubled, maybe tripled, if not quadrupled down on the whole this or something better. So it could be this client or something better. It could be this course or there's something better. It could be this book or something better. It could be this exercise program or something better. It could be this whatever or something better. I'm always focusing on changing my mindset that I don't think everything is, oh, the world's going to end or, oh, if I don't do it this one specific way, then I'm going to lose my opportunity. I'm going to lose my chance. I'll never be able to do it again. When in reality, that's not always true. There's a once in a million examples of when, if you don't do it right now, that that whatever will not come up again, right? Like technically that is a reality, but majority of the time, like 98% of the time, that's not true. You always can have that opportunity again, or maybe you were not meant to have that opportunity. You were meant to have a bigger, better, brighter, smarter, more expansive opportunity. But all you had was this fear-based mindset. Most of the time it comes back to money that you just shut everything down and you're like, oh, well, if this doesn't work, then it clearly can't happen. So instead of leaning into that fear-based mindset where it's Sunday night or a Sunday afternoon, we're supposed to be doing the job on Monday and I still haven't heard something for the client. 
I was like, you know what, fuck it, this client or something better. Let me reach out to him one more time, make sure we're good, and then we'll go and we'll move on from there. Reached out to him and he's like, yeah, sorry, I've been super busy. I definitely want you to do the work for me, blah, blah, blah. And then we ended up working out the logistics and all of that. And over the next couple of weeks, we'll continue to do work for this client. But it goes back to that mindset. The mindset that I have now in 2022 versus the mindset I would have had in 2021 or any year prior to that, I don't know, depending on what year you would have reached me in, like if we were looking at time capsules of my mindset, I don't know that I would have reached out to that client to follow up. I would have taken his ghosted, I don't know, communication of, oh, clearly he's not interested, so therefore I should not bother him. I should not leave him alone. See, I knew I couldn't earn money this way. This just proves it. Oh, we quoted too high, so next time, the next client, I need to quote lower. I would have made all of these stories up when in reality none of them were fucking true the poor man was busy taking care of his own life and his own family and instead i was you know the old me would have taken all my old limiting beliefs all my old money fears and put it on this guy when again none of it was true so that's why you know i really wanted to title this episode that your money mindset and your money mentality really does affect everything because there's all these opportunities there's all these beliefs there's all these ways you are going to handle yourself you're going to respond to scenarios you're going to respond to opportunities you're going to respond to growth that if you don't have a good handle on it there's so many things that you're going to shut down so Another example, because like I said, I've talked about speeding up to slow or slowing down to speed up. I've talked about your money fears. But another thing I wanted to do is I want you to go ahead and start thinking of this, um, this phrase that we've been using a lot in our household. It's called yes and. And I have a total, totally have a cup that I'm going to design off of it because um, you know I love my merch and adding merch to the shop store. So I'm actually pulling up the notes on my phone really quickly. The cup, one of the cups is going to be, yes and, comma, I will be the example of making the impossible possible. Like, I'm totally vibing with that, that phrase. I love it because I want you to think of not just, oh, that can't happen because that reality doesn't exist. So I'm trying to think of a good example. I'm probably not going to think of one. But, you know, if someone came up to you, let's say this. If someone came up to you and said, hey, I'll give you your dream job, and then they shut up. Instead of you saying, oh, that can't happen, oh, I've got obligations, oh, that, that, that company won't be flexible enough for me, oh, what about this, what about that? Instead of putting all of these objections, oh, they won't pay me well enough, oh, they won't give me health care, oh, they won't do whatever, right? Instead of coming up with all these objections, and same thing if you are running your own business, when a client comes to you, instead of coming up with all these objections, I want you to say yes and. I don't want you to say no. I don't want you to think about fear. I don't want you to think about um, how it's not a reality, how it's not possible, how it can't happen. I want you to say yes. And then I also want you to say and. Yes, I'm willing to have that dream job show up. Yes, I'm willing to have clients come to me. Yes, I'm willing to do X, Y, and Z. And, or even but, sometimes but, but most of the time and. And I want blank, 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 blank. Because I feel that when you are clear, again, it goes back to that communication, right? When you're clear on what you want, when you're clear on your desires, when you're clear on what you need, a good chunk of the time, it'll actually show up. And again, I go back to, it's it's one of those things that you build this muscle. I, I'm not trying to preach only woo and not practical, because that's the one thing I don't like. I don't like... I don't know what you call them, spiritual teachers, online teachers, online marketers, whatever, like whatever, right? I don't like people that only preach the woo and they're like, well, cool. This is cool. This is inspiring. This makes me excited. And then your reality kicks in and your daily to day life kicks in. And you're like, yeah, but how the fuck do I implement this shit? A lot of that comes back to your mindset. So in particular to this episode, your money mindset. So if your dream job were to come up, I want you to think of all the scenarios, right? This happens this way, this happens that way, you're unhappy with this, you're doing that, you love this. And I want you to say yes and. Yes and I make, I don't know, 20,000 more, 30,000 more, 30%, 50% more than what I make now. Yes, and they contribute to my 401k. Yes, and they help me pay off my student loans. Yes, and I make a whatever. I want you to start saying yes, and. But what I want you to do is I want you to understand that when it comes to your money mindset in particular, that it's going to start 
bumping up on things that you're not expecting. And a lot of that happens when you start to say yes and. I noticed in particular about some lingering mindsets that I had that were very bad negative mindsets that the only way I was able to kind of reorganize, reorganize my brain, get my energy behind it, get clear on it, get clear on what I was asking for, get clear on, you know, what I wanted and, and kind of move through the fear that was happening when it came to money was to start saying yes. And so let's go back to examples. A prime example was that client, that client, it started out with, let's, let's go back to the beginning, right? That client started out with a message on Facebook through Facebook marketplace because of a service we offered. And then I'm like, this dude sounds really freaking weird. And mind you, I've met him in person multiple times. I've met his wife. I've met his kids. He is so nice. Um, he's an awesome dude. But the way he communicates on Messenger and then the way he communicates in, in person is totally different. And had I not met this man, I never would have understood him. So this client, again, came to us from Facebook Messenger. And then I'm starting to communicate with him on Messenger. I'm like, this is fucking weird. Whatever. He asked to call me to call him and we ended up calling him we had a conversation over the phone and we're like well we need to really see this in person because to try and quote this out like i'm going to completely not be able to quote out what you need is it okay if we meet you in person he said yes so we met him in person and then when we met him in person we again ben and i had a conversation with him we talked about this we talked about that um and then he's like okay go ahead and give us a quote so we were like okay in a couple days we'll you know we'll work out the details and we'll send you over a quote every single step of the way Every single thing from believing that I could, quote unquote, it's called bird dogging, but believing that I could book uh, or get a client from an online post was a yes and statement. Believing that we would even be able to go and meet with him at his property to go look at what he wanted done was a yes and statement. Sending out the initial quote was a yes and statement. Following up on the quote was a yes and statement. Making it so that we could do the job in the realistic time frame of what we have was a yes and statement. I kept constantly telling myself over and over and over again, this client, we're something better. Yes, I want this client and we're gonna do it this way. Yes, I want this client and we're gonna structure it this way. Yes, I want this client and we're gonna get paid this way. Yes, I want this client and we're gonna show up for him this way. If I had not had that mindset, I can guarantee you there's easily three different scenarios that I would have sabotaged this. I would have been, he thinks we're too expensive. He thinks we can't do this fast enough. He would rather have a bigger guy than pay, you know, us. There's all these things I could have done to have just completely fucked it up 10 ways to Sunday. But again, I go back to, I have focused on cleaning up my mindset. I have focused on making sure that I don't have these weird, random, lingering rules on how money has to come into our lives, which also, again, let's go back to the bigger picture. It helps support the goal that I have had of this year, we're going to double our income. Every time I say that, it is a yes and statement. I am affirming to the universe. I am affirming to God, angels, and everyone that's listening that's good. I'm affirming to myself. I'm, I'm affirming to my subconscious. I'm affirming to Ben, who probably thinks I'm fucking crazy, that yes, I am willing to do the work. Yes, I'm willing to show up. And part of me knows that I have no clue how half of this is going to happen, but I'm willing to show up. I'm willing to be flexible. I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to adapt. I'm willing to try these things because I am, again, going back to a yes and a yes, I want this and I'm willing to do blank. I'm willing to show up. I'm willing to think differently. I'm willing to do all of these things. But every time I say, you know, this year we're going to double our income. I'm thinking, Margaret, you are freaking insane. Like I'm not even talking to myself in mags. I'm talking to myself in Margaret. Like she'll shit's getting real, right? If you, if any of you are Spanish or know of a Spanish family, you know that when your full name, all, not just your first, middle and last name, but your first, your middle, your last name, your mom's last name, your grandmother's last name, all the last names start coming out. You know that shit's getting real. So my equivalent when I'm talking to myself is when I'm like Margaret, then I know that like shit's getting real. But every time I say that phrase, we're going to double our income this year. I could choose to say, well, how the fuck are you going to do this? You don't have anything in place. You're not a famous Instagram person. You're, you know, your, your TikToks are not all the ticks and the talks. Blank, blank, blank. I could come up with all these excuses and I could sabotage, sabotage our 
our chances. I could use a bad money mindset to say that that is not a reality. Instead, every time I say that phrase, I am choosing to trust myself. I'm choosing to step up and say, yes, and yes, I want to double our income this year. And we're going to do it in a way that I'm probably not even expecting. Yes, we want to double our income this year and it's going to be fun. We're going to enjoy it. It's going to be exciting. Yes, we want to double our income this year and we're not going to lose all of it to taxes or business expenses. Yes, I want to double our income this year and I'm also going to have downtime in the process. Yes, I want to double our income this year and I'm open and willing to look at see things differently. So I'm constantly reaffirming myself so that I can change my mindset so that I can stop linking that money has to be hard and money has to be scary. I've done a pretty decent job of taking all of that out of the equation, but there's always, I don't want, no, I shouldn't say that. There can be another, other layers that you didn't recognize were there, or maybe there was just a bad little pocket in the corner of your brain that you're like, oh, it had this scenario not happened. I never would have recognized that this no longer is true for me. So part of that came back to creating wealth. I have always, 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 always said I was going to be a multimillionaire. Knew that from this get-go. But I've always had this thing of, well, it can't happen right now because of this. It can't happen right now because of that. It can't happen right now because I'm not an Instagram famous TikTok person, whatever, right? So I always made these rules of how the wealth has to come into our lives. And in reality, what I should be doing or what I have been doing, I should say, is I've changed my mindset around not just money, but creating wealth, creating a legacy, creating space that, yes, I can choose wealth and I can choose space. Yes, I can choose wealth and I can do this. Yes, I can choose wealth and I can get paid to learn in the process. Like, that's one thing. Um, there's this person, Kate Northrup, that I am friends with. Um, I've known her years and years and years ago. Um, we've gone to an event that she hosted in Maine together. Um, I, I've done all these things, right? Kate is an amazing woman. And one thing that she told me years ago was you can get paid to learn. And I was like, what? That's a thing? Oh my God. So it comes to the same concept. I can get paid while I'm learning on what it looks like to become wealthy. I can get paid while I'm looking what it, while I'm learning what it looks like to double our income in a year. I can get paid that every time I slow down, my results will speed up. I can get paid even though I may have some old, weird, random, lingering beliefs around money. All of these things can happen because I'm choosing to program my mindset. I'm choosing to program my brain. I'm choosing to program my reality. And for me, every time I choose to program my mindset, every time I choose to program my reality, that affects the actions that I take. And sometimes, so, when I say actions, I don't mean actions as in I'm going to kill myself every second of the day because I've been there, I've done that, I've worked through burnout, I've lived through burnout. It is brutal and I will admit to this, as I've gotten older, I don't bounce back as easily. You know, the joke of like when you get old, you don't bounce, you kind of flop. Well, that's how it felt every time I've recovered from burnout. So when I start to recognize that burnout is coming, I go back to my yes and statement. Yes, I can create wealth and I can take the night off. Yes, I can create wealth and I can go to bed early tonight like a two-year-old. <laughs> yes, I can create wealth and I can take off a day from work and still get paid. Yes, I can have a record-breaking week at work and still take a day off. Yes, I can do this and do that. Yes, I can do this and do that. So it's all about how I've chosen to program my brain. And even that's a yes and statement. Yes, I choose to program my brain and I choose to learn and I choose to get paid in the process. Yes, all of these things are possible. Yes, I can show up and I can get paid, but I don't have to do them at the same time. So all of these things are happening. All of these things are the mindset that I have crafted and I have created. And I think that that is very important because you might be thinking, okay, well, this is like almost a 30 minute episode for so far. And I got to learn all about Maggie or Margaret, depending on who you're talking to at the moment. But like, I got to learn all about her money mindset. Cool. But how does that apply to my life? Well, hear me out. How this applies to you, how you turn this tangible woo version of a conversation into hard fact reality is if you are starting a business for yourself, if you are interested in the course, betting on me, if you're interested in the course of becoming a, uh, becoming a wealthy woman, all of those things that I've talked about, right? If you are interested in 
quote unquote betting on yourself and becoming being I shouldn't say becoming being in business for yourself a lot of your money mindsets are going to affect how you show up they're going to affect how you talk to your clients they're going to affect what you market you're going to, they're going to affect what you price yourself as they're going to affect how much you're willing to work how big of a discount you're willing to give all of these things will come back to your money mindset so if you're not working on that getting rid of these old shitty limiting beliefs learning how to become a yes and person and maybe i should make that a course i'm going to make myself a note that yes and is totally going to become a new bonus in my uh i don't know if i'm going to put it on becoming the wealthy probably becoming the wealthy woman i'll put my yes and one in there but like if you're not willing to do all of this mindset work creating a good healthy mindset creating a good healthy mindset around your money then when you show up again working for yourself when you show up you're going to show up and you're going to shoot yourself in the foot you're not going to go after that that client confidently you're not going to ask for the full rate you're not going to say i can do the work this way not that way you're not going to do all of these things because you're going to be only based in fear and how this conversation of 30 something minutes of woo turns into a tangible thing when you show up at work, it's going to go back to you're not going to apply for a better job because you don't believe that anything better exists. You're not going to ask your current boss for a raise because you think that the company's maxed out. You're not going to try and change your compensation plan. You're not going to try and move into another department. You're not going to do X, Y, and Z. You're not going to ask the customer that you're serving for a whatever. Like it's okay. So here's another tangible upon tangible upon tangible example, right? Think of your money mindset as this. I've used the Universe Cafe as a really good example, and I deeply love that example. But think about it this way. Pretend you're the waitress this time, or the waiter. So you go up to your customer, and you're like, hey, I'm here to take your order. What would you like? And then they go ahead and they do their order. If you have a bad money mindset, you're not going to start off the night asking to see if they want to see the drink menu and if they want the two for one margaritas, right? You're not going to ask that because you're going to believe, oh, well, they have a family or they have this or they have that or they have X, Y, and Z excuse here. Therefore, they're not going to want my two for one margaritas. So you're going to shoot yourself in the foot tangibly that way. The other part of that example, again, if you were the server, would be that at the end of the meal, you're not going to ask for the fucking dessert. I hate, I hate, I hate whenever we go anywhere and we go to a restaurant and the server, the waitress, the whoever is taking care of us doesn't ask if we want dessert. I'm thinking that is the easiest fucking question you have to ask. You can ask it every single time. It always applies. And if they say no, they say no, but at least you fucking asked. So every time someone asks, do we want dessert? Nine times out of 10, I say yes, because I'm like, you know what? I kind of do want dessert. Uh, whatever sounds really good right now. But if you don't ask the question, you don't get the answer. You don't even put yourself in the running. And so again, let's go back to the practical tangible if you're working for someone else and you don't quote unquote ask for the dessert if you don't ask for the raise if you don't ask for a better compensation if you don't ask to have something taken off your plate that you don't want to do anymore is ever even an option to have it come into your existence maybe the answer really is no okay that's okay at least you fucking asked at least you tried i want you to celebrate the fact that you tried not the fact that you got shut down so going back to that server if the server in the beginning of the conversation asks if they want the drink menu and the two for one margaritas that's an at bat option that they have again if they close out the end of the transaction saying hey do you want dessert that's another at bat chance that they have and again if you are that server let's say they did do the margaritas and let's say they did do the the, the desserts now only what if you know maybe the customer instead of just one person at the table does margaritas say everyone does margaritas at the table you're your tip just got bigger. And let's say they do desserts on top of it. Then again, your tip just doubled now. They doubled because of two questions you were willing to ask. But if your mindset is in regards to fear or lack or because of X, Y, and Z scenario, this can't happen because these people have a family. They won't want our margarita because these people 
look like their stuff. They're not going to want to eat dessert. If you start putting all these judgments and limiting beliefs into the equation, you're never going to ask. You're never going to show up. You're never going to get the bigger, better opportunities. And it might sound silly to use an example as a server and two for one margaritas and some dessert, but it's the most clear, tangible thing that I can have you do. I want you, whatever that looks like for you, I want you to ask for dessert. I want you to ask for the sale. I want you to ask for the referral. I want you to ask for the recommendation. I want you to ask for the thing because I want you to also celebrate that if they say no, it's okay because it's going to out be outweighed by all the people that do say yes. So with that being said, I want to talk about some bonuses before I get into the journal prompts. So the bonuses right now, I've talked about money mindset. I've talked about a bunch of different courses. There is the master course that I took and I am a part of, and I'm going to an alumni for Money Mentality Makeover. It is live right now. If you're listening to this in February, the course is live. If you decide to take the course, and I know a bunch of you have been interested in the course, if you decide to take the course and use my link, again, my affiliate link, which I'm, again, I'm asking for the freaking dessert. I have no qualms recommending this because I've done this course multiple times and I have the changed, updated, much healthier money mindset because of it. If you decide to take this course, once you go ahead and you do the purchase using my link, it takes about a couple days, but it'll let me know. But I want you to reach out and email me a screenshot or forward me the email at info. No. Yeah. Info at margaretstevens.co. Send me the link that you went and you enrolled in Money Mentality Makeover. Because when you do, I will go ahead and I will add you to the Betting on Me course. And I will also add you to the Becoming the Wealthy Woman, my bonuses. I will add you to those two courses as well. And you will get them with updates for life. So five years from now, when Betting on me is a six module course and I'm charging two, three thousand dollars for it. You'll still have access to it five years from now when becoming the wealthy woman has all of these different journal prompts and exercises and maybe I even do a retreat about it. You'll have access to all of that. You have access to everything for life because I do believe which I've talked about in the past, I do believe in timeless principles. I do believe in timeless energy. I do believe in timeless mindsets and mantras. And if I'm going to recommend something, I want you to have those bonuses. I want to make sure you have access to all of that for life. So that is me asking for the dessert. I hope you look into Money Mentality Makeover. I think it's a phenomenal course. If you have questions, I don't care how silly, how simple, how unrelated you think that question might be, just reach out to me. If you want to reach out to me in the social medias, have at it. Facebook, Instagram, freaking TikTok, um, on Pinterest. I don't care how you reach out to me on the social medias. Feel free to reach out to me. If you want to email me, you're more than welcome to email me. If you want to fill out the little contact me form on my website, you're again, more than welcome to reach out to me. Whatever questions you have, don't hesitate because I'm here to help you. And again, I've said this before. If I don't feel that something is a good fit or whatever, I will happily recommend you do something else. If I don't think money mentality makeover is a really good fit for you, but maybe something else is a good fit, I can look at recommending that other fit and then I can see if I can structure a bonus accordingly for that. So I don't want you to think that, oh, you're going to be browbeat that just because I'm recommending money mentality makeover that if it doesn't doesn't work for you, that it's not going to work for you. Of course, I'm going to recommend what works for you. And the other thing too, which I always get questions on this one is, oh, well, money mentality makeover could be really expensive. You know, how do I afford that? I go back to every fucking, every, every fucking course I've ever done was on a payment plan, like every single one of it. So I don't want you to think that if you don't have the money to pay something up front in full, that you can't afford it. I've done payment plans on everything. And the other thing too is as I've done payment plans on things and as I have had more money come into my reality because of X, Y, and Z, I've always reached out and said, hey, I want to pay extra. I want to pay this off early. And no one's ever told me, no, you have to do your payment plan in full because I don't want you to pay something off early. Like no one ever is going to say that. So if you either because of cash flow reasons or comfortability reasons or whatever. If you need to do payment plans, like fully embrace the fucking payment plans. All right. I'm going to get off the payment plan kick, but I just kind of wanted to 
ask for the dessert. We're going to call it that. I, mean, I wanted to ask for the dessert before I gave you the journal prompts. So we've talked a lot about money. We've talked about fear. We've talked about receiving. We've talked about creating wealth. We've talked about limiting beliefs. These journal prompts are kind of, they, they may seem very passive on the, the surface, but I want you to go through them a couple times and then you'll kind of really start digging out what's going on in your subconscious. So the first one is when it comes to receiving money, how does it make you feel? And I can give you a very clear example on this one. When we received money the other day for taking care of the client that I was talking about, the one that I, you know, again, had multiple opportunities to fuck up on and I didn't. When we physically received the money from that client, I, and I was going to call it this, but like the money felt orgasmic. <laughs> and I know that I probably shouldn't say this and may, oh God, if my mom or dad listened to this episode, it's going to be like so embarrassing. They won't even look at me. They'll be like, Margaret, why are you talking about those things on a podcast? That is going to be recorded for life. But like the thing is, every time I receive money, and I have always felt like this, every time I feel I feel money coming in or I receive money or we get paid for something or we get a check for something, whatever, right? Every time money comes into our household, it feels fucking orgasmic to me. It feels so good, so happy, so joyful that it feels orgasmic. So I want to know what does receiving money feel like for you? And again, if money doesn't feel good to you, that's a cue that you probably should fix your money mindset. So the other question, question number two, is when it comes to spending money, how does it make you feel? So in the past, I would have told you uh, overwhelmed. I would have told you scarce. I would have told you like there's never enough. And I've talked about that. I've been very open about that in previous episodes. Now, present day, every time I spend money, because I'm very intentional with the money I spend on the frivolous things and on the non-frivolous things, but every time I spend money, I have trained my brain again i've changed my mindset that there is more where this came from that i will always have access to money that there i can never outspend it and that doesn't mean i rack up like all of the credit cards and i do all of the things and i do dumb stuff but i have this new belief that spending money means that there's more where that came from and that's okay and that's it there's no good there's no bad there's no hype there's no anything but for me spending money means that there is more where that came from. So for me, spending money feels safe. Okay, question number three, or journal prompt number three, I should say, is what rules you have attached to earning money? I've kind of hinted about that in little different pockets of this episode, but when it comes to earning money, when it comes to not just receiving, but truly earning, what does it mean for you? Does it mean you have to do it through your day job? Does it mean you have to do it a certain way? Does it mean you have to sell X, Y, and Z? Does it mean you have to work this hard? Does it mean you have to kill yourself? Does it mean you have to, you have to, you have to? What rules do you have? Like if I said, you know, that, and you're like, oh, I have to blank. What does that look like for you? Because those are the things, again, the, those are limiting beliefs around your money mindset that you should definitely focus on tackling because there's so many different ways that we can receive money nowadays that I don't want you boxed into this corner just because you never actually thought about it. All right, general prompt number four. Do you trust yourself with money? And again, I've been honest for a very long time. I would trust myself to earn it. I would not trust myself to receive it. I would not trust myself self to save it and I definitely didn't trust myself to spend it. So I have worked very hard, very, very, very hard and I'm extremely proud of where I've came from that I trust myself on all scenarios. I trust myself to earn it. I trust myself to receive it. I trust myself to save it. I trust myself to spend it. I am now getting comfortable trusting myself to invest in it. I am, I am trusting myself with all aspects of money. So same thing for you. Do you trust yourself when it comes to money? If not, why? Question, journal, prompt, whatever you want to call it. Number five is what does creating wealth look like for you? Now notice that I said wealth and not earning money because creating wealth might mean, oh, I've got more PTO than I know what to do with. Oh, I get to take a bunch of vacations. Oh, I get to do this. Oh, I get to do that. Oh, I get supported. Oh, someone comes and cleans my house for me. I don't, I, I'm not trying to put a limitation on it, but I want to know what does creating wealth look like for you? And then the last journal prompt is journal prompt number six is why is that important and what need does it fill in you? I've been talking about this for a while now 
um, one of the many layers of conversations that I've had over the pod- podcast episodes. But a lot of this, and I go deeper into it in Betting on Me, but a lot of this comes back to safety. A lot of the things we do is because it makes us feel safe. Whether it's right, it's wrong, it's good, it's bad, it moves us forward, it takes us backwards, doesn't matter. A lot of it comes back to needing to feel safe. So can you take creating wealth, receiving money, earning money, spending money, investing money, having money, saving money, rolling around like Scrooge McDuck in money, can you take that and not only find out why is it important to you, but can you turn that into something that feels safe? Every time I earn money, I feel safe. Every time I receive money, I feel safe. Every time I spend money, I feel safe. Every time I invest my money, I feel safe. Every time I do X, Y, and Z with my money, I feel safe. And I want you to write down why it's important to you because majority of the time, if we can't get our brain around the why are we doing this, you'll half-ass it. And I don't want you to half-ass it. So why is it important and what need is it filling? And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this episode. All of the links, and again, all, I I truly mean it, all of the links are in the show notes. Um, If you have any questions, reach out to me through the social medias, through the emails. I don't care. Whatever you prefer, I'm here for you. And hopefully I will see you in this year's Money Mentality Makeover. Have a good one. Bye. Have a burning question for me? Want that link I was talking about? Get access to all the resources and links that were mentioned in this episode and others over at margaretstevens.co. And if you haven't, don't forget to sign up for my VIP list where I share special bonuses, pre-launch coupon codes, and advice I don't share anywhere else. Thanks for listening.